So in this video, we are going to focus on the introduction to functions as well as how to graph a few common functions. Now, if you are new here, make sure you subscribe to this channel, like the video and share the video to all your friends. So let's get into today's lesson. So what then is a function? Now, a function is simply a relation between a set of inputs and a set of allowable outputs with the property that each input maps to exactly one output. A function is said to be a relation between a set of inputs and a set of allowable or better still expected outputs with the property that each input maps to exactly one output. So now let's consider two non-empty sets x and y. So let's assume that x is made up of elements 1, 2, 3, 4 and then y is also made up of elements 10, 20, 30, 40, 80. Now x is said to be the set of inputs and then y is said to be the set of outputs. Now the mapping from x to y becomes a function if and only if each element of the input or x corresponds to exactly one element in the output. So the mapping from x to y becomes a function if and only if each element of the input or x corresponds to exactly one element in y or the output. So we can say that 1 maps to 10. 2 maps to 20, 3 maps to 30, and then 4 maps to 40. Now because each element of x maps to exactly one element in y, then we say that this is a function. This is a function. So let's consider two other cases. Two other cases. Case 1. We have the set of x1 values made up of elements a, b, and then set of y1 values made up of elements 1, 2, 3. So a maps to 1, a maps to 2, and then b maps to 3. And then for case 2, we have set of x2 values made up of elements p, K O R, and then set of y2 values also made up of elements 1, 2, 3. So here P maps to 1, K O maps to 1, and then R maps to 3. Now which of these two cases is a function and why? Now we said that for the mapping of x to y to be a function, then each element of the input must correspond to exactly one element in the output. Now looking at case 1, you realize that element A, which is found in the input, corresponds to two different elements in the output. Therefore, since A corresponds to two different elements in the output, it means that this cannot be considered to be a function. So this is not a function. This cannot be a function. Now moving on to case 2, on the other hand, you realize that each element of the input corresponds to exactly one element in the output. P corresponds to 1, Q corresponds to 1, and then R corresponds to 3. So since each element of the input corresponds to exactly one element in the output, we say that for case 2, the relation here is a function. Now what is the conclusion or what are the conclusions that we can make here? So one, we say that one input, one input cannot yield more than one output. One input cannot yield more than one output so example is what happened in case one an example is what happened in case one where we have a corresponding to one and then 
a also corresponding to 2 now this is not allowed so one input cannot yield more than one output and then secondly two different inputs two different inputs can yield the same output the same output two different inputs can yield the same output here you realize that we have p corresponding to one and then q also corresponding to one so two different inputs can yield the same output so that was for case two case two and then this is for case one now focusing on this function let's define the terms or the basic terms in a function now a function has got a domain a range and a rule of correspondence that assigns exactly one element of the range to each element of the domain so what then is a domain of a function so the domain of a function is said to be the set of all values that makes the function defined the set of all values that makes the function defined and usually the domain is said to be the set of x values the set of x values so looking at this function and then trying to figure out the set of x values we have one two three four so this is the set of domain or the set of domain values now let's move on to what we call the codomain so the codomain is said to be the set of y values and is defined as the set of all possible output values the set of all possible output values now the set of all possible output values here are 10 20 30 40 and 80 these are the set of all possible output values now out of the codomain we can get what we call the range now the range is also said to be the set of y values to some extent and the range is defined as the set of all assigned outputs so the range is the set of all assigned outputs now looking at this function the set of all assigned outputs are 10 20 30 and 40 so we have 10 20 30 and 40 so this is the main difference between the codomain and the range the codomain is the set of all possible outputs while the range is the set of all assigned outputs and the rule of correspondence takes the form y is equal to f of x so x is the domain x is the domain or sometimes we say the independent variable independent variable and then y is said to be now let's maintain this as the range or image so y is said to be the range or image or the dependent variable dependent variable simply because it depends on the value of x that is fed into the system or the function now y and then f of x are basically two different symbols that are used to represent the same item that is the range or image values corresponding to the domain x values the range or image values corresponding to the domain x values and then f of x is simply mentioned as the image of x with respect to the function f now let's move on and focus on how to graph a few common functions so a function f establishes a set of ordered pairs of real numbers which is written in the form x y or x f of x 
so x here is the input and then y or better still f of x is the output now the plot of these ordered pairs on a coordinate system is what we call the graph of a function which basically gives a pictorial representation of the function now in this section we are going to consider a few common functions and try to graph them so we have a y equals x and the domain is real numbers between negative 1 and 1 inclusively and then b we have y equals the absolute value of x and the domain is same as the first that is between negative 1 and 1 with the boundaries inclusive now we don't need too many numbers or too many values in the domain we just need a few to graph these functions c y equals x square and then d y equals the square root of x and the domain is the set of all real numbers greater or equal to zero the set of real numbers greater than or equal to zero so let's start off with a so that is the function y equals x let's try to plot this function so we have our table our x y table and then the domain is the set of all x values so we have negative 1 0 and 1 now we are not going to plot all the numbers in this interval we just need a few of them so y is equal to x means that each value of x will be the same value of y so for x equals negative 1 y becomes negative 1 x equals 0 y becomes 0 and then x equals 1 y also becomes 1 so let's try to plot this function so we have this to be the y axis x axis and then we have the x values to be negative 1 0 1 and then for y we also have negative 1 0 and then 1 so negative 1 negative 1 this is negative 1 negative 1 0 0 and then 1 1 so basically this is how the graph is going to be like it's going to be a straight line this is how the graph is going to be like so that is the graph y equals x b so for b we have the function y equals the absolute value of x so let's plot our x y table we have negative 1 0 and then 1 and then for y this is going to be 1 absolute value of negative 1 is 1 absolute value of 0 is 0 absolute value of 1 is 1 So we have negative 1, 0, 1, and then 1, 0, 1. So negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, and then 1, 1. So this part of the graph is going to look like this. That's a straight line, just as we have here. And then this part of the graph is going to be or it's going to look like this simply because the absolute value of a negative number is positive so this is how the graph is going to look like so that is the graph y equals the absolute value of x now let's move on to c so we have our table here our x y table negative 1 0 and then 1 and the function is y equals x squared so negative 1 square is 1, 0 square is 0, and then 1 square is 1.
so negative 1 0 1 and for the y value or for the y values we have 1 here on the y axis and then negative 1 1 this is negative 1 1 0 0 and then 1 1 so this is going to look more like a cave something like this y equals x squared now to the last one which is d we have y equals the square root of x and the domain is set of all real numbers greater or equal to zero so we can start from zero we have one two three four and so on and so forth now square root of zero is zero square root of one is one square root of two is 1.4142 so let's approximate this to 1.4 so let's say square root of 2 is 1.4 square root of 3 is equal to 1.7321 so we approximate this to 1.7 so we have 1.7 here and then square root of 4 is 2 so for the graph, we have this to be the y-axis, x-axis, so we have 1, this is 0, 2, 3, 4, and on the y-axis, 1, 2. So this is 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 1.4. So 2 and then 1.4 will be here. 3, 1.7. That will be somewhere here. And then 4, 2. So this is how the graph is going to look like. And that is the function y equals square root of x. Where x is greater or equal to 0. So basically these are a few equations or functions and this is how to graph them. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Bye-bye.